Hello guys, today I'd like to talk a little bit about those motor controllers from Kelly. Um, I've got two slightly different versions over here, so what do they have in common and how, and how far are they different? And then we're doing a little bit of unboxing. Um, so first of all, what is it about? Uh, we're talking about motor controllers for brushless DC motors with sensors. Those controllers are suitable for Hall sensors. There are also versions out there for cosine sinusoidal um, sensors, but those ones are for Hall sensors. Um, both are naturally for three phases. Uh, that means we've got three bridge legs inside, uh, two levels, uh, which means just one high side and one low side switch. Uh, three bridge legs, so overall we've got six switch arrangements, three low side, three high side. And um, furthermore, both are designed for 96 volts, nominal voltage, and 600 amps. Um, those are more or less the, the biggest ones available by means of power rating. Kelly also offers slightly smaller ones. Uh, but those ones, as I said, just around about uh, 100 volts and 600 amps motor current and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, 240 amps continuous battery current. Um, that's the older one, which is called 8080i, um, uh, goes back to 2017, whereas this one is the newer one produced uh, just this year in 23 and it's called 8080N. So as you might have followed in the last video, uh, I, I'm using those ones in the uh, Twizy as dual drive unit and something went wrong with one of the controllers so I had to open it. I thought I can easily repair it and opening it, unboxing it, it looked like this. Apparently there was a huge firework going on inside. Unfortunately, no one saw it. And um, it turned out that uh, all 54 MOSFETs um, uh, have been burned down, completely destroyed, and also some further damages. So almost impossible to repair that baby over here. So what can we see over here? We can see, uh, probably better over here, uh, not very symmetrical arrangement of the three phases. Um, we've got the DC supply over here and the three phases coming out over here. One is a little separated. So as I said once before, it's not a very symmetrical arrangement. We've got the DC link, the capacitor smoothening the and supporting the DC voltage. Over here in total, we've got uh, 13 of them with 100 volts, um, which is a little tight in my opinion. So if you've got such unipolar electrolytic capacitors with 100 volts, they're able to swallow peaks up to yeah maybe 20% on top of it, but that's a little, uh, yeah, qu quite tight in my opinion. And uh, overall, with 470 micro each, we end up with around about 6 millifarad over here. Um, which is sufficient, even though you can place uh, uh, higher, uh, bigger caps in here. So they're wasting a little space. So why not installing caps? Uh, with more height and maybe 680 or 1000 microfarads each, I don't know. And uh, partly they are pretty close to the MOSFETs, which is good, so low stray inductances. But on the other hand, there's a long way to the far end over here. So if switching happens over here, the voltage peaks over here will be much higher. Um, the MOSFETs, as you can see, some are left over in here are uh, TO220 standard package, uh, through hole mounted um, on such parts over here. That's what it looked like, round about like this, you know. And um, no thermal insulation in between, which is good uh, because uh, you, you've got a good thermal conductivity. So whenever heat appears in here during switching or conduction losses, 
uh, it could easily flow into those massive alum aluminum parts. And then we've got a, a, a difficult a thermal path through the PCB to the base plate over here. And then finally, we've got the base plate, which is also designed a little like a heatsink with some fins. Uh, talking about destruction, you can see it over here or probably in some pictures. Um, so massive meltdown, no pins, legs of the MOSFETs have been left over. There were some drops of, of molten aluminum inside of the housing and um, it was I was not able to repair it again because there were really some holes burned into the PCB uh, destroying structures uh, which were necessary for controlling the MOSFETs over here so the gate control and the gate resistors simply disappeared and rebuilding that structure is, is too critical maybe it lasts for a couple of hours but uh, during uh, heavy duty um, it won't last long so at the end um, short summary uh, the mosfets uh, are called 75N15, which implicates they are rated for 75 amps under ideal conditions, so room temperature if only you can get rid of the heat, uh, continuous drain current, and 150 volts drain source voltage, which is okay in that application. And overall, we've got 6 millifarads uh, DC link, smoothening everything, swallowing uh, voltage peaks, ring switching off and uh, a not very symmetrical design overall. Coming to that candidate, which I ordered right away, and uh, curiosity made me opening it and having a look inside what it looks like. And you can see huge differences. Of course, the basic principle is the same, the topology, three legs, high side, low side switch, and so on. Uh, but it's a way more symmetrical design on the one hand. And secondly, as you can see, um, they're using SMD MOSFETs, TO263 package, also known as D2 pack. Uh, so surface mounted device, which makes it way more cost efficient and uh, easier to, to assemble it in general. Over here, we've got instead of just nine in parallel, even 10 in parallel. Uh, the label doesn't tell me much. Uh, I suppose it's, it's a special type uh, produced for Kelly only. So I wasn't able to find any data. Um, and the DC link over here, maybe coming back to the previous picture, is, is placed more centrally, which is good, but on a separate PCB with some distance, which leads to, to, to some stray inductances. Um, so I'm not sure on that construction if it's really good or not. Uh, but at least they changed to caps with 200 volts, which is much safer, but with less capacitance, but some more capacitors in total, but leading to just uh, was something about three and a half, four millifarads instead to the six millifarads in the older one. And um, talking about thermal design, some things are worth being mentioned. On the one hand, um, what is good about it, if heat appears over here in the semiconductor die itself, uh, you've got a very good connection, thermal connection to the PCB itself, but then you need to go through the PCB and to the base plate, which is a little thicker than for the old one because that one doesn't come with any fins. So it's really 20 millimeters solid uh, aluminum. So for that candidate over here, you need to spend an additional heat sink. I think they even offer um, a liquid cooling system, which you can attach to it. And the default version came with some heat sinks mounted to that base plate. All right, guys, so far, um, we have something else. 
Yeah, the intelligence control circuit microcontroller are more or less the same. Yeah, that's it so far. Oh, so whoever is interested in that uh, piece might raise his arm. Just contact me, you can have it. And uh, now I will install the new controllers in here and then hopefully sooner or later the baby drives again. Okay, so far, see you next time. Good, bye.